Hey, good afternoon, and um, welcome to another edition of uh, Lunch with a Shark. A new week. Um, everything is going smoothly. We've had a very, a very nice uh, morning here at Invictus Advisors, and um, it's been, it was a very relaxing weekend. A lot of moving pieces for some of our clients. A lot of uh, good news for for other clients, and um, it's been a great morning. It's great. I've been a, been a very very nice um, nice morning, nice weather. Um, everything is running smoothly. I hope it is for you guys. Uh, we've been working um, in the business and on the business for some deliveries uh, to our clients, some deliverables for our clients, and focusing on a lot of little. Um, uh, little issues that uh, will help a lot of people uh, through the organization and it's very interesting that we're talking about through the organization because uh, an aspect of running a small business uh, that a few people give a lot of thought is to how do I deal with my professional vendors and uh, what we mean about professional vendors is how do you deal with your bankers, with your financial advisors, with your, lawyer, your lawyers, your consulting team, if you have them as executives, your accountant, and so on. Most of you have no idea that you have to hire lawyers, a CFO or accountant, uh, consultants and uh, that's a huge piece and part of your business uh, it's not just for ongoing businesses or for companies that have been in business for a couple of years no they're not uh, if you believe that let me tell you one thing your belief is not right your belief is a little bit narrow-minded it's my belief and uh, you must start with a sol solid, solid, solid foundation to grow your business. Uh, the biggest problem is when you try to create foundation once you've launched your business, once you've been in business for multiple years, because what it does, it actually creates a, um, a sense of entitlement for everyone and the problem arises when you try to start setting controls when your attorney says hey you know what you don't have proper agreements in place either with your employees with your vendors with your independent contractors even with your clients and when you try to set those agreements in place uh, people get frustrated people get like why are you doing this to me why are you doing this at this point in time we've been working so good uh, uh, without an agreement uh, we shouldn't sign this agreement uh, I don't like this agreement and it's both ways but trying to do so in the middle of your uh, marathon or your sprint or in the middle of your growth it's going to be extremely complicated other than instead of implementing new agreements it would have been easier to create addendums or a little bit modifications to the pre-existing agreements either with your again to the same with your vendors your independent contractors or even with your clients you know what let me change this clause let me modify this and let me give you an example when you open a credit card you sign the agreement on the credit card and as times time goes credit card companies they change unilaterally their agreements and they send addendums through email or through the mail to let you know hey we changed this clause from this to this to read that and you simply accept it there's no way of not accepting it unless if you're not in agreement then the only thing you can do is go ahead and close the account um, same as with airplane tickets, same as with event tickets. You don't go and read the agreement 
that that ticket grants you and say, hey, you know what? I don't like this and this and this and that. It is what it is. So most entrepreneurs, we just dive right into our businesses uh, without giving second thoughts to how these professionals should be treated. Why do we need those professionals? And I have a, a very interesting, a very interesting comment that uh, we have been reviewing some some structures and some um, some pieces of a puzzle for a restructuring. And with an agreement, there was this lady who contacted us, and she said, "You know what? Um, your agreement it's very intrusive, invasive." And it actually goes against my um, financial, uh, uh, it's generating me a financial burden. And I say, and I ask her, why is that? Because I've never had an agreement in place and this is creating me um, anxiety because I have to now hire an attorney and an accountant to review first the agreement and second to see if I have to pay taxes. So are you going to pay for that? And I'm like, you are in business on your own. You are an independent contractor. You are a company. And you're telling me that this is a financial burden in your part to hire an attorney and a tax expert to explain to you what you have had, had in place for all those years. Wow. If you are in business on your own, you must have an attorney and you must have an accountant. If you don't want to pay taxes, don't generate revenue. Because ultimately, even the best tax strategy out there, you're going to have to pay some taxes. Trust me. And even the best attorney out there, he's going to charge you and he's going to advise you as to the agreement, as to what are the limitations or what are you signing, okay? So it's very important for you to realize that you need this professional individuals in your business. With little thoughts and efforts, you can ensure that you get the most from this relationship. Your accountant, your attorney, uh, your banker, your financial advisor, your counsel, uh, when it comes to uh, uh, mentors or coaches, they are your best allies. They are not your enemies. And if they are really good, they're going to talk to you with the truth. They're going to actually tell you not what you want to hear or listen, but the reality, the truth. And, and it's very interesting because a couple, a lot, I think it's last week or a couple of weeks ago, I had an interview on a um, radio show and they were asking me as to uh, being a good accountant. And I said, well, being a good accountant is asking your client is one plus one, how much do you want it to be? Nevertheless, knowing that mathematically one plus one is always two. Um, you client or your client must realize that you're there to advise them, not to just please them. A good about advisor is not there to please their clients. If you're pleasing your clients, you're just doing something wrong. Plain and simple. Um, your, your client or our clients are going to appreciate honesty and they appreciate, trust me, I've seen it, you, very, you being very clear and blunt when it comes to their questions. If you answer around the bushes or if you answer with what they want to hear, there's no value there. Okay, so this is a great relationship. How many times do you meet with your accountant? How many times does your accountant call you? And I'm going to talk about the accounting piece of it because I'm an accountant. 
we are business consultants and we utilize accounting to advise our clients. How many times does your client call you? Uh, your accountant calls you. Is it just when it's time for them to ask you for your tax documents once a year? Is it because your invoice for the year has not been paid? How many times do you meet with your accountant if you really want to grow your business? Listen, how many times you meet with your accountant if you really want to grow your business? Uh, if they are just, if you're just meeting with your accountant for tax reasons, then you're not in the long run in your business. Utilize your accountant. Accountants are not just tax preparers. Accountants are not bookkeepers. There's a difference, and I think we are explaining, we have already explained the difference between a bookkeeper, an accountant, and a CFO. Okay? It's very uh, interesting when your belief or your perception of a accountant is somebody that prepares your books and somebody that sends that information to your tax account tax advisor to prepare your tax return. If you do that, there's no way your tax preparer can turn back time to help you reduce your tax liability. And if your tax preparer tells you, oh, you know what, there's nothing we can do right now, but next year I'll help you tax plan. Call me next year and I'll help you tax plan. Run. I've heard stories like that, that uh, their tax advisor uh, comes in the US, let's say that it's March 15th when your tax return is due, and he calls you, she calls you and say, hey, you know what, uh, you need to come and sign your tax return or you need to come and uh, sign your extension and um, apparently you're going to owe $50,000 in taxes. But next year, we'll do something. It's, it's, what is it going on? You need to be proactive. Your advisor needs to be proactive because they're not providing value, okay? So your goal should be to develop a long-term, first of all, long-term relationship with your business by having goals, okay? And then a long-term relationship with each of those professionals. Again, your banker, your financial advisor, your attorney, your accountant, okay? If you do that, when you hit a bump in the road, you'll know who you need to call, okay? Your each of those advisors, your board of directors, those advisors can be actually part and should be part of your board of directors. They're your advisors. They're there to tell you how and what to do. They advise you with all the elements that you provide them, okay? You provide them. If, if you don't proactively throw information out them okay they won't be able to advise you properly so you need to be proactive so with that said here are a few example of services that your accountant should should provide you okay we need to provide you help you understand your financial statements you as a business owner should not know how to interpret those financial statements on your own. You're gonna learn through your business experience how to understand and read them. I'm gonna give you an example. Oh, here's a balance sheet. Okay, uh, there's numbers. And is your accountant sitting down with you and teaching you at least how to read those those that balance sheet at least explaining to you what the profit and loss means at least telling you what's your cash flow okay there was a there was an issue uh, in our office last week where they were asking me to prepare a cash flow but based on the information the company should declare bankruptcy 
there's no way with that information, I would say, you know what, continue or move forward uh, with your business because you're going to be successful. They have tapped in into their 401k. They have tapped in into all their lines of credit. They have been in business, unfortunately, due to COVID-19 for the last three months. They are on a membership uh, basis uh, uh, service. And since they're closed, they can't charge on the memberships because they're not being able to fulfill. So therefore, their business at this point is dead. Their business lost money even on 2019. So based on that, I'm like, what is it that they want or what is it that they're seeking on us? I'm more than happy to prepare your cash flow without any problems, but a cash flow statement or projection, it's not going to help you. So if your accountant does not know what document, what statement, what attachments, what additional information he needs to gather from you or needs to provide you, you're not going to survive. Okay? So they need to help you understand those numbers. You should use your accountant expertise to help you analyze your financial statements so you can understand what he or she is telling you. If you neglect to do this, you won't know as much as you should about your company. Okay? The bottom line, it's not all that you need to know. You're making money or you're losing money, that's not everything that you need to know. Maybe you're losing a lot of money, even though you're making money, in the middle section of your profit and loss. Your accountant should be able to help you decide whether your corporation or LLC should be taxed as a disregarded entity or as an S corporation. Whomever thinks that an S corporation, it's a entity, no, okay? There's no such thing as an S corporation entity. I'm not an attorney, okay? But entities are only corporations, LLCs, partnerships, trusts, professional uh, corporations, okay? Disregarded entity, it's an LLC. Okay? They can be taxed as an S corporation. S corporation is a way of taxation. If you explain or if you ask that to your accountant, they should be able to tell you exactly what I just said. There's no such thing as an S corporation other than a way of being taxed. Okay? In order for you to succeed, you must set foundations the basis, a good foundation will create a good business. Your accountant also should be able to explain and show you the risks that you personally and your company engage in and how to protect you. Right now we're going through a internal audit for some of our clients. We've been doing some research into their businesses and we've determined that some clients have a huge exposure when it comes to independent contractors, certain agreements, uh, banking, uh, some agreements that they've been signing not properly, uh, legal terms or their, uh, their disclaimers when it comes to online presence. That risk does not just say, hey, it's not a slap in the hand or a simple lawsuit to correct it. No, that lawsuit or that neglecting that information or not having that information, it's going to cost them tons and thousands of dollars or even their business. If your accountant is not able to determine that risk, run. Let you know, number four, your accountant lets you know financial problem areas in your business. Again, based on your financial information, I would be able to tell you, you know what? You might be spending too much here. You might not be getting the return on investment here. You might not be doing this. You should probably do that. 
if I am to know your business, if I know your numbers, and if I know where you want to get or go or hit your financial goals, I would personally be able to help you uh, trace a roadmap, a blueprint on how to achieve that. Where can we cut costs? Where can we increment those investments to maximize your return? But it's all based on shared information. Okay? And then number five, maximize tax savings. If if you only call us or visit us or see us once a year, there's no way we can maximize your tax savings. There's no way I can say, hey, you know what? Your revenue was this much. Um, let me do this. We can't. I unfortunately I don't have the time travel capsule from Big Bang Theory and or um, uh, um, this other movie will uh, uh, come to me, uh, Back to the Future, because I won't be able to help you. If you come to me twice a year, I'm probably going to be able to help you. If you come to me four times a year, I'm definitely going to be able to help you. And if I can't, I'll refer you to somebody. And if I can't, then there's something wrong. Okay, so I hope these tips help you understand the importance of a professional advisor or multiple professional advisors in your team. Um, if you can't afford them, that's a huge problem. Not because you can't afford them, but because you're limiting your limiting beliefs. So. What I'm going to ask you is, if you need some support, reach us at invictus-advisors.com slash cash flow. 95% of businesses fail because of cash, lack of cash. Uh, we're going to put this on the messages and um, I'll be able to review your numbers. I'll be able to give you some nuggets that will probably maximize your profit will maximize your uh, cost savings and um, will help you ultimately. Make sure to follow us on social media. The links, uh, again, will be posted on the chat section. And as usual, here's an interesting quote. Uh, today we're quoting Elvis Presley and he said, I have no use for a bodyguard but I have very specific use for two highly trained public accountants. <laughs> Let me repeat that to you. I have no use for a bodyguard, but I have very specific use for two highly trained accountants. It's been a pleasure talking to you this afternoon. See you tomorrow with a lunch with a shark in Spanish. Uh, I think we're going to have uh, Gabriel again as a guest. And uh, I don't know what we're going to talk about, but it's going to be a surprise. And uh, see you tomorrow. Uh, and uh, have a good, not a good, have an amazing week. See you.